All right. So today we are going to be looking at a, another type of binomial expansion. And this video and the next one are going to fall under an umbrella that I'm going to call binomial relationships. So two different types of relationships with certain kinds of binomial products. Now, before we even go into kind of defining this, I'm just going to give you two examples. And if you want to use this time to revise, you absolutely can just revise your regular binomial expansion. Or you can wait for me to finish it. But we're just going to look at a couple of examples. So perfect square binomials are just binomials that are squared. So for example, x plus 5 squared. And let's go x plus 10 squared. Oh, let's do a different, um, let's do a different letter. Let's do a plus 10 squared. Okay, cool. So looking at this, because from how we defined a, a square number in a previous video, which I'll leave up as a card, this is just the same as writing. Well, x plus five multiplied by itself. And this one here is the same as saying a plus 10 multiplied by itself. That's the definition of a square. Now, let's work through these separately. Now we have two binomial products and from either the area method, which we looked at before, or the quicker foil method in which every number multiplies with every single one and they each interact, we can come up with a solution to these. So here, each of my elements are going to interact and get multiplied by one another. So first of all, our x multiplied by x, we will get x squared. Our x multiplied by our our first one multiplied by our outside five, that's gonna give us positive five X. These two inside ones multiplying will give us another positive five X. And the last ones multiplying by one another, that gives us 25. Okay, and we can, we can simplify this because we have two like terms here. We can write this as x squared plus 10x plus 25. Now, before I go on to the next one, have a little pause and think about each of these elements that I've generated through my perfect square binomial expansion. And have a think if you can find between this example and the next one we'll do, if you can find some trend, some relationship between each of these terms and the, the terms in here. Now, let's move on to the next example. And it should become a little clearer as we go through this one. So once again, I'm going to do this a bit quicker because I've covered it in a previous video, the, the FOIL method in particular. So multiplying these two, I'll get a squared, a multiplied by 10, I get 10a, a multiplied by 10 again, I get 10a, and then 10 multiplied by 10, I get 100. Now I can simplify this again because I have two like terms, and I'll end up with a squared plus 20a plus 100. Cool. That's pretty good. Okay, well, what did we, what do we notice here? Well, okay, our, if you, if you have some, if you've made some observations, that's fantastic. I'm just gonna run you through as well what, what I see. So I see that with each of my final answers to the expansion, well, my first term here got squared and my last term here got squared. That's cool. And 
when I did the expansion, I got the I got two lots of the product of these two. I got one 5x here and another 5x here. Now I got the same thing in my next example, didn't I? Because I got my first term here squared. I got my second term here squared. And I also got two lots of the product of 10 and A, my two terms inside the bracket. So that's pretty cool. And let's take this, let's take this one step further because you could be saying, well, you know, you've, you've, you've done two examples, both with, um, with positives here. What happens when we choose negatives? That's okay. Let's have a go. So I'm going to divide this page in two and I'm going to give you another two examples. So, and I promise we'll, we'll wrap this all up at the end. We'll consolidate all of our observations into a general formula, but we're going to keep, keep working through these, see if we can make any, any observations. So another example I'm going to give you is what happens when I have X. Oh, I've been using X a lot. Let's, let's go Y, Y minus six squared. And my other example is let's do 12 minus 3B, all squared. Another two perfect squares. This time we have, um, we have a negative here. And I've also flipped over the order. I've put my, my, whole, my whole number here and my algebraic term here. So just trying a couple of different things, seeing if it yields similar results. So once again, feel free to pause this if you'd like and give it a go on your own but I'm going to do it here and just, I'm going to rewrite this out as a binomial product. Oops. There we go. So let's do this side here. Well, okay. Expanding this, my Y multiplied by Y gives me Y squared. My Y multiplied by negative six will give me negative Y. My negative six multiplied by Y will give me negative six Y again. And my negative six multiplied by my negative six will give me positive 36. Now, once again, I have two like terms, which I can now simplify to y squared minus 12y plus 36. Okay, that's cool. Let's, let's try this on the right hand side and see what we get. So 12 multiplied by 12, we get 144. 12 multiplied by minus 3b gives me minus 36b. Negative 3b once again multiplied by 12 gives me negative 36b. And negative 3b multiplied by negative 3b will give me 9b squared. Gotta keep zooming out here. All right, and simplifying this one more time, we get 144 minus 72b plus 9b squared. Now, let's look at the bigger picture. I'm gonna zoom out to every example we've done. Now, what do we notice here? Well, once again, my first term gave me a y squared, and my second term, well, even though it was negative, when it was multiplied by itself, it, it still gave me a positive square. And the third term here was once again, the two lots of the product of my two terms, except here we have a negative sign. And that makes sense because multiplying Y by negative six 
should give me negative 6y. And two lots of negative 6y gives me negative 12y. Same here. This term squared. Negative 3b. We got a square term. And we got two lots of the product of our two elements in our binomial, which were negative 36. And two lots of that gave me negative 72b. So we can generalize this into a formula, can't we? We can say that when dealing with perfect squares, with perfect square polynomials, of the form, let's say, a plus b squared, or a minus b squared, the, the result of expansion gives us, well, in this case on the left, it gives us a squared, plus two lots of our product of binomial elements plus our b squared. And when we take the negative, we get a squared and our middle term will be negative because multiplying this a by this negative b by, by two, well, Sorry, I, I've circled the square, but I, I just mean by a factor of two produces a negative sign. So we get negative 2ab plus b squared. Now, this is how it'll be written in your textbooks. And I personally don't really like this one here because the, the, the negative here is a bit confusing because... We, we multiply our two by A and B here, and we just stick a negative out the front, which is, which is cool, like that's okay. But you'll see that all of the examples we did, if we take a normal expansion, then we can think of all of these as just being the first term squared and the last term squared. And multiplying two by a and B, whether either of these are positive or negative, it should still give us the general formula. So that is how we deal with perfect square. And I keep writing polynomials. I mean binomials. Uh, you can really see I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. So polynomials, we won't touch for a while. So sorry about that. We are dealing with perfect square binomials. Let me just check I haven't written that anywhere else. Okay, that's good. So by looking at all of our pattern, by looking at all of our questions, we observe the same pattern here. And we can come up with a general form for dealing with perfect square binomials. I'll see you guys in the next video.